have an exclusive first look at Green Valley UNLV. Greg Connor Fields and his recovery in Tokyo. That's him at the hospital on the right side. They're sitting in a wheelchair. He had that horrific crash in an Olympic qualifying race on Thursday. But he is giving us the thumbs up. We have been given the thumbs up that our Reed Cowan is standing by live from Tokyo to talk about this this morning. Reed, it is just tremendous to be able to see his face and see him. But I have to be honest with you, when I look at that picture, when you look at his eyes, it looks either like he's devastated or just kind of out of it. What else do you know? Well, we know Connor has been in a fight, literally, to uh, try to get well in a Tokyo hospital. And, you know, over the weekend, really all of the reporting, Kim and Dana, was basically one very generic statement. And there was a lot that I knew, but because of my proximity to the family, was asked not to report. But by this morning, we do have some clearance to give you a backstory of what the family is saying happened. Mike Fields, Connor's dad, says that when his son hit that track, he had a brain bleed. He was bleeding on the brain, unconscious, rushed to the hospital. And, you know, Mike Fields told me that there were some very difficult, scary phone calls to get. But then he also started to feel the support of thousands of people all around the world who were sending messages by Twitter and Facebook and otherwise. And he said he got this photo on his phone showing Connor with a family friend and somebody he works closely with up talking, his eyes open, his thumbs up. The family says they'll take it. But, you know, we're parents. Can you imagine being a world away from your son, your son who's so critically injured, and not being able to do anything. Mike Fields tells me in this exclusive interview, it was a living hell for a parent. People didn't know how serious it was. How serious was it? Well, it, it was, it was a, a brain hemorrhage. I mean, it, the, brain, the brain is an incredibly uh, sensitive organ. And we're still not out of the woods. I mean, I think we can see the paddock from here, but uh, you know, there, there's a lot of optimism, but he's still gonna have to go and undergo brain tests when he gets back to the States. So we'll take that. You hear his words. There's a lot of optimism there. We can know that the bleeding on the brain has stopped. Connor is able to talk. In fact, not long ago, I got a text message from Mike Field saying I was able to FaceTime with my son for the first time. I said, how did it feel? And obviously the answer was absolutely great. So Kim and Dana, now it's all about watching his brain. Doctors in the United States trading information with doctors in Tokyo, figuring out the best way to get Connor home, how to get him home, who to fly him home with. Best case scenario, Mike hopes for by Friday. Worst case scenario, he'll have to stay here a little bit longer. They're just taking everything slow. They say, forget the metal, just get our son home and get him home safe so we can get him on the road to recovery. So, so if he does get on that plane on Friday and heads back to the United States, do we know if he's gonna be headed back here to Southern Nevada or some other hospital in the United States that specializes in some of these brain issues? I've had some private conversations with Mike. They're zeroing in on hospitals. I think the best thing I can report to you to, uh, this morning is that it will be a hospital likely in the Western United States. I have an idea of where he's going to go, but I think I better wait until I report it publicly and get clearance from the family. But it looks like Connor's going to be in proximity to home while he heals. Hey there, John. Well, we went to a zip code with one of the highest unvaccinated rates in our community. And what I heard from some unvaccinated people is that they could be making the appointment to get the shot soon. No, it's kind of too early. John is among the nearly 43% of Nevadans who aren't vaccinated and says little could change his mind at this time. I'm kind of scared of more of the vaccination and catching COVID. A recent national poll found 45% of unvaccinated Americans say they will definitely not get the shot. But Sumara Alfrado with Mi Familia Vota says she's seen many, once hesitant, change their minds. A lot of people are, you know, fearful about getting the vaccine because they're not given the right information. Through canvassing teams, answering questions and sharing their own vaccine experiences. And that just kind of seems to gain the trust of our community, of our neighbors. Fueled by the Delta variant, Nevada and national hospitalizations continue to rise. This may be a tipping point uh, for those who have been hesitant to say, OK, it's time. That's what's concerning Marianne Mitch. I'm 50-50 on it. Once wanting to wait before getting vaccinated is now reconsidering. I'm a little nervous about these new strains that they're talking about, too. And nationally, the numbers show progress. 
Vaccinations down just a few weeks ago are slowly ticking up. On Saturday, the CDC reported over 800,000 doses were administered Saturday, the fifth day the agency recorded more than 700,000 shots. As doctors stress, the best thing you can do right now is to roll up your sleeves. For those who are unvaccinated, it's more deadly. And for those who are vaccinated, they're protected. So we all need to get vaccinated. And experts suggest that you can talk to your doctor to answer any further questions you might have with the vaccine. We have a full link of resources, including vaccination sites on our website. That's news3lv.com. Reporting live from the studio, Lauren Clark, News 3. That is the sound of unwavering support from Las Vegas for the family of fallen NHP trooper Micah May. May was struck on Tuesday while deploying stop sticks on the I-15 while attempting to apprehend a carjacking suspect. After battling in the hospital, he died on Thursday evening. The 46-year-old was with the department since 2008. He leaves behind a wife and two kids. Thank you for joining us. I'm John Trainer in for Crystal Allen. Our news is Lauren Clark joins us live outside NHB headquarters with words many want May's family to know. Well, John, every event that happened this weekend, whether it was the procession right outside here you at UMC to a coffee fundraiser to a ride in his honor, every single person who came out in support of Micah May has one thing to say to his family. We love you and we support you. Somber sounds and near silence. Punctuating the procession outside UMC. For fallen NHB trooper Micah May. This trying time. The loss of the 46 year old father of two hitting the Las Vegas community hard. Knowing that he had passed away is just had a shockwave. But today, community members rallying together to show support. It's absolutely least we can do. A crowd of well over 100. This turnout is absolutely amazing already. With flags and trucks to grieve alongside his family. I was very devastating. Signing notes of encouragement and sharing condolences. Her father and the, her husband is a hero. You should know that he died in honor. Las Vegas is here for you. We love you. And evidence of that love. Heard and seen in a sea of cars. Honking while proudly parading along the Las Vegas Strip. It pulls on your heartstrings. All to send this message. We're here. Our prayers are solely upon their entire family. As a community, we're here for you guys no matter what. But we all just came together. That's what we do. We come together. And for those who want to help out, there is a donation fund for his family. We have a link to that on our website. That's news3lv.com. There's also going to be a candlelight vigil in his honor on Tuesday at 6 p.m. at Police Memorial Park. Hi, everybody. I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.